Welcome folks, we are ready to part 3 of this tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to learn how to use transient analysis and to make life easy we are going to use a very simple circuit basically it's going to be an, an RC circuit so let's get started so I have already logged in into the server using the NX client and now I'm going to open a Unix shell. So I'm gonna right click on my mouse and I'm gonna open a new terminal. So that's what I have here. And now I'm going to type in uh, the change directory command to move into the cadence subdirectory that I have in my server. So I'm gonna use the command cd space del. Del stands for my home directory backslash I'm going to write class backslash ee311 backslash cadence and now I have moved in into the subdirectory and now I'm going to load in uh, the cadence tool especially the virtu tool so I'm going to say virtu And then I'm going to add the AND sign and I click in and now my uh, cadence tool is being uploaded and we will wait for a couple of seconds here. Again my server is fast because I am connected into the server which is located in the same building that I'm in using the LAN connection so as I said earlier that this is a very fast connection and I was able to load the software very fast if you are loading the software from home then it might take you a few extra seconds to do so in any case we're gonna start a new uh, uh, cell basically a new circuit uh, in the homework 2 so this tutorial is part of homework 2 assignment so I'm gonna go to file then a new I'm gonna use the same library I used the last tutorial which is homework 2 but I will add a new cell and uh, uh, so uh, this is a new cell we're gonna call it RC underscore 1 uh, you can give it any name but I'm gonna call it RC underscore 1 uh, uh, and it's gonna be under uh, homework 2 uh, direct uh, library uh, uh, what's important for us is that we are gonna use the a d e l advanced design environment l to do the simulation that is important you can also select as always use this application for this type of files basically we're gonna use the schematics to draw the circuit but when we're gonna simulate the circuit we're gonna use the a d e l environment so that's all for us we're gonna hit OK and we should uh, get a new schematic window as shown here so this is the one we're gonna use and now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add parts so there is two new parts we're gonna learn in this uh, uh, tutorial one of them is the V pulse V pulse is a special kind of voltage source that this voltage source will generate rectangular balls so that is the first thing that we're gonna have and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say uh, uh, create instance and under create instance we're gonna select the library so the library gonna come in under analog library and under cell I'm gonna use V Bulls. So when you click on VPulls, uh, we can have a bunch of uh, parameters that we are interested in. So all what I need is just one of them. So here, oh, and then the view also going to be uh, simple. So you can see that if I move into the schematic here, I will have the simple. And now I'm going to enter the parameters. The first parameter I'm interested in is the voltage one because this is a rectangular pulse is going to start from level 1 voltage 1 going to be 0 to level 2 which going to be 1 volt so it's going to go from 0 to 1 volt and then it comes back to 0 goes back to 1 and it keep going like this forever so this is a 
periodic signal it keep repeating itself every period so it's a periodic signal and the period going to be uh, 20 millisecond and the delay time is basically a parameter says when will this pulse start so the delay time will be zero we will start counting for this pulse immediately at t equals zero we will start to jump from zero to one and it will go for 20 milliseconds period and it repeats itself now there's two important parameters the first one is called time rise so the time rise is basically how long will it go from zero to one volt so i'm gonna use 10 micro so 10 micro will be very small compared to the uh, 20 milliseconds right so it's a very sharp rise and edge this is this parameter cannot be zero if it is a zero then the simulation will collapse because when it calculates the derivatives it cannot say that it jumped from one value to another one in zero uh, second it has to have some time parameter for it some delay time uh, to jump from zero to one uh, the same thing for uh, uh, delay time is zero rise time is 10 micro the same thing for fall time on the fall time also I'm gonna say that it's gonna take 10 microseconds to drop from 1 volt to 0 volt the pulse width is basically how wide the pulse is so the pulse width going to be half the period you can choose another parameter but here I'm using half the period so it will be 10 milliseconds so this is important the period is 20 milliseconds but that's the entire period that keep repeating itself but it will jump down every 10 milliseconds so half the period will be will read one volt and the other half of the period will read zero volt right and then we don't care about the temperatures what's important here is the type of rising and fallen edge so I'm going to use linear. So linear basically says that this is going to jump linearly from uh, 0 to 1 uh, volt in 10 microseconds. Same with the fallen edge. You can use a sine wave uh, uh, kind of signal. So have sine wave if you want it, but that's not important for us. So we're going to use a linear uh, 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 time rise because the time rise is so small that it is irrelevant uh, for us to define different types. This is basically to simulate simple circuits. In more complex circuits, you might want to use the half sine wave where the time rise is not gonna be as sharp, but it will basically have the shape of a sine wave or half sine wave. In any case, this is all what we have to do. So I'm gonna place the voltage source uh, somewhere in here so I'm gonna say close I'm gonna click it in here I'm done with that I'm gonna skip I'm gonna click on escape and now I'm gonna choose another parameter and this parameter going to be the resistor so I'm gonna come here again uh, 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 to create a new instance and then I'm gonna click on the browse and under cell I'm gonna type resistor res and that's the resistor i have i'm going to keep the value as one kilo ohm but i'm going to make it uh, horizontal this if you look into the resistor it's vertical so i'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and you can see by rotating it 90 degrees here the resistor becomes horizontal i'm going to click hide and i'm going to add this resistor over here then escape and now i'm going to do the same thing and add the capacitor so I'm gonna, the capacitor name will be CAP, C-A-B. Oh, let's do browse, and or cell, we're gonna say CAP. And I'm gonna choose the value to be one micro. So I'm gonna change it from one pico to one micro. And the capacitor gonna be vertical like that. So I'm gonna do hide. And I'm gonna add the capacitor somewhere around uh, here. And then I'm gonna hit escape. Uh, there is a couple of things I'm going to add. One of them is the ground. So I'm going to come here, do browse, and I'm going to do GND. 
I need two uh, grounds. One ground will be connected here and the other ground will be connected here. And then I will connect the wires. So I'm gonna come click on wires and then I will do escape twice. And I connected this wire and then I will also connect this wire. So I'm done with the wire connections. I'm gonna put escapes. All that I have to do now is I'm gonna uh, add two pins because I'm gonna use the pins to measure the output voltage and the input voltage. The input voltage should be rectangular bulls. The output voltage should uh, uh, be uh, the time rise, time fall equation for first order RC circuits. So if we look, if we add the pin, so I'm gonna make two, the both of the pins to be outputs. Uh, so I'm gonna have one here. So I'm gonna do hide and I'm gonna add it, add it here. Oops, let's do it again. Oh, I have to give it a name. So it's gonna be V out. And it's gonna be output, hide, and I'm gonna add it here. And then I'm gonna add another bin and I'm gonna add the bin over here and I'm gonna call it VN. And I'm gonna rotate it sideways because I want it to be the other way around. So I'm gonna add the spin over here. So now I'm ready to connect those spins. So this bin gonna be the voltage at the output like that. that I connect the wire wire I have to connect it to the top of the capacitor Then I'm gonna connect this one also to this pin. So you can see that uh, this particular pin will be the voltage across this voltage source. I'm gonna do, move it a little bit down to look nicer like that. And this particular pin will be the voltage across the capacitor and we called it V out. So I'm gonna also move it down like this to look nicer. So this is your output voltage. This is your input voltage. Those are uh, pins actually, those are, and they are used to measure the voltages. So we're gonna measure V out and V in. So we're gonna, we should, when we run the simulation, we should see a rectangular pulse over here, and we should see a sort of a time rise over here because this is a simple first order RC circuit. Now what we have to do is we have to define the simulation. So we're gonna come over here. This is part of the A, uh, uh, DEL environment. If you don't see this toolbar uh, over here, you can click on launch and select that. The ADEL environment will do. So we already have it. So I'm gonna click on the simulation type. So I'm gonna choose TRAN, that's by default. Uh, we're gonna select uh, the stop time. Stop time is a parameter says for how long the simulation gonna run. The transient analysis basically is a simulation will run or evaluate or simulate the circuit as a function of time. So this is important. Evaluate the circuit, simulate the circuit as a function of time called TRAN or transient analysis. Here we use the abbreviated word TRAN. So basically for how long this transient analysis is gonna run. I'm gonna choose 40 milli. 40 milli will be basically two periods based on our simulations. And what's important here is to say enabled. You have to enable this simulation. So click on enabled and check it, check this box. This is important. So select the TRAN 
use 40 milliseconds here how accurate you wanted the simulation in a very complex designs this becomes important to say for example conservative accuracy which means that you're gonna have very small resolutions but to do that it will take a very long time uh, you can say liberal where you wanted to run the simulation very fast you do that usually early on in the simulations to verify that the circuit working uh, but if you wanted to choose conservative simulation that will take a long time and some complex circuits that will take hours sometimes even days and other circuits that uh, like this one it shouldn't take long but we will keep it default so the default uh, uh, set is what we're going to use and then we will click uh, make sure that this is marked enabled mark and then we're going to click OK so now basically it says that we're going to run a transient simulation for this particular circuit the next step is the, to define what's are the outputs so we're going to set up the outputs so i'm going to set two outputs as i said v in and v out so we're going to uh, click on uh, uh, set up outputs then we're going to come to schematics we're going to click from schematics and we're going to select this pen uh, see that the line here shows it's a green so basically the green plot the green line plot in the graph gonna be basically for VN and we're gonna also click on V out so uh, I have the color purple here so I'm not sure what color you will have it on your video but I have a color purple here and says that this is V out if you go back and you click on set up outputs again you're gonna see that we have VN and V outs they're gonna be plotted and they're going to be saved and if you select VN it shows you that the type of signal we're going to measure is voltage and you're going to if you're going to select V out it shows you that the kind of signal that we're going to measure will be voltage so we're going to say okay that's done with that now we're going to run the simulation so to run the simulation you use this play button the green play button that's run simulation now we're going to run the simulation and when you run the simulation take some time to run it but uh, here you go now we ran it so in the graph here actually it shows you that the red line gonna be VN so you can see that VN is a rectangular pulse where each pulse gonna have roughly 20 milliseconds and half the pulse gonna be 1 the other half gonna be 0 and then it repeats and that should repeats forever it's gonna do that forever it goes from 0 to 1 to 0 again to 1 to 0 again to 0 to, to 1 to 0 again and so forth but we only ran the simulation for 40 milliseconds so we start the simulation at 40 milliseconds V out right this is V out V out is basically going to be the response of the voltage across the capacitor so you can see that we have time rise here and then we're going to have time fall here uh, using the equation which is basically V at 0 minus V at infinity times E to the minus T over RC plus V at infinity and you know so forth and this one is the same right so this is the response of or what we call it the step response we call them the step response because we have applied a unit step function at the input so you apply a unit step function that jumps from 0 to 1 at t equals 0 and that's the response for it the step response right and then at uh, 10 milliseconds it dies because the input signal dies from 1 to 0 so is V out of the capacitor will also die but the voltage across the capacitor will take some time for it to reach the final value which is zero and it keep repeating itself so again you can see the power of you the power of using this kind of tool to simulate circuits now keep in mind that this is very simple circuit we basically introducing you to what kind of simulations you can run using this kind of tool but this particular tool is designed for IC circuits, right? So to design complex IC circuits, basically integrated circuit chips, uh, you use the Cadence tool. And 
this tutorial basically part three of this tutorial should uh, conclude everything you should do for homework two that is if you are a student of mine of course taking the electronics course the junior year electronics course those are some of the homework assignments that you will have so in the second homework you basically gonna run simple circuits like this one and we're gonna ramp up to do more complex electronic circuits as we go through the course so this is the end of homework two and for those of you who are gonna watch this video on YouTube I hope you can also learn and enjoy this uh, tutorial hopefully for those of you who wanted to become IC designers that this particular tutorial gonna be helpful as well thank you